In this video we are going to get a quick summary of all the 8 major new features of Angular 17.1 that is just out. So without further ado, let's get started! Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. By far the biggest feature that has been released in Angular 17.1 are signal inputs. So now you have available this new input primitive that allows you to declare a signal as an input property. So this is a signal based alternative to the traditional at input decorator. You have available a whole video on input signals here on the channel. So go ahead and check it out if you want to learn about input signals in more detail. Next up, we have available a new advanced router option. It's this info parameter here. So now in a navigation, either programmatically or by uh, using the declarative router link API, you can add an extra info parameter. So this object is going to be part of the navigation extras object. You can retrieve it in the following way by getting the current navigation and from the extras object you grab the info parameter. So this info parameter is not being persisted in the browser uh, history API. So if you hit back and forth, it's not going to be reflected here in the URL. And let me give you an example. If I click here on this navigate to home button, you're going to notice that nothing shows up here in the URL. So this is not persisted. If you hit back and you hit forward again, this info parameter is not going to be passed. So this is purely transient information that you might want to use in certain situations. Most of the time, this is not a feature that you would be using every single day. But if you ever need to pass some extra information in a specific route navigation without that information getting persisted here in the URL, now there is a way to do it using Angular APIs. Next up, let's talk about the new test runner that you have available. So if you want to use this test runner, you need to install here this package in your project. So you go here to your console and you run the following command npm install uh, at web slash test runner. So this is experimental support for this test runner. You can activate it in the following way. Go to your angular.json, go to your builder configuration for your uh, test task. And here, instead of Karma, simply use uh, the web test runner in the following way, web test runner. And now if you run your tests here, in your command line using the usual command ng test, you are going to see that the new test runner is being used. So you can see here the warning. This is currently experimental and it's not ready for production use. But if you want to start to play around with it, you already can in Angular 17.1. Next up, we have several improvements on the Angular CLI migrations. So the control flow migration with ng-generate Angular core colon control flow, this migration is now updated and improved. So a lot of bugs were fixed and new features were added. So if you want to migrate your projects from ng4, ng if, ng switch to the new control flow syntax at if, at for, at switch, you can run this migration. The migration itself is still on developer preview, but this new version is much improved. So you might want to try it out. Still in the topic of Angular CLI migrations, if you want to upgrade your existing legacy project in order to use the new application builder, you have a new migration available, ng update Angular CLI minus minus name use application builder and your angular.json file is going to be updated in order to use the new application builder. Next up, there are a couple of nice developer experience improvements in the Angular CLI development server. So I have the server running here and notice this new message here. If I press H plus enter, I have a couple of uh, useful shortcuts that we didn't have available before 
to force the reload of the browser to show the server URL that we are currently running to open a new window in the browser with the Angular CLI development server and we have here a command to clear the console and to quit. Next up, we have some important improvements in the Angular Material library. So now all the Angular Material components are fully standalone and also they support server-side rendering client hydration. So this means that if you are building your application using Angular Material, your front-end will no longer re-render everything that the server has just rendered if you are using client-side hydration, that is, which is recommended. Go ahead and check out a video that I have here on the channel, the Angular SSR Deep Dive, where I explain in detail client hydration and how server-side rendering works in general. We also have an upgrade to TypeScript 5.3 and to v5 at the level of the Angular CLI build. Now, if you want to learn Angular in more detail, check out my website, the Angular University. The courses are up to date to Angular 17. They cover the new control flow syntax with at if, at for, at switch. You will have a full section on signals on deferred template loading and you have the Angular SSR course updated to client hydration. Check out all the courses that you have available. You have the free Angular for Beginners course over two and a half hours and you have here many other more advanced courses such as the core deep dive, the TypeScript bootcamp, a course on RxJS, you have the Angular forms and router in-depth courses, reactive Angular, NGRX, testing, a security course, you have a Angular Material Depth course, the server-side rendering course, and much more. So go ahead and check out the courses. Please leave me a like here in the YouTube channel. Thank you so much everyone for watching and I will see you next time with more coverage of the upcoming Angular releases and new tutorials also here on the channel coming very soon. Cheers everyone, have a nice day.